afternoon, everyone. So I'm just going to run you through the workflow of how I use GreatScope the way. So this is GreatScope. And what I did was I created a little mini exam. So I do all the stuff on paper. Um, they have options if you want to do this like an online exam. So here I just created you know, a simple exam with some questions and so forth, give the students a paper exam. And after that, I'll scan it in and you'll see something like this, right? Like the person's name, uh, their exams. These are just mock exams that I created. And let me just walk you through the workflow of how I use it for, let's say, paper exams. So the first thing is just you go to grade scope, assignments, create assignments. And so there's various options as to how you can use this to grade students' work. The one that I use the most is the exam quiz, where basically I have a template of the assignment that I have, like the one that I just showed you, where the, basically the PDF of what I'm going to give the students once I print it out. But they have other options, such as if you have a homework assignment where it's a little bit more free form, there's not, you know, they just have a number of questions that they have to answer on, on paper and they can upload the assignment themselves. And then the other one that I've used in my classes, specifically so have programming classes, is that they have a grader where it can grade programming assignments. I won't go too much into detail on this one since I'm not sure how relevant that might be to some of you. And the last one is online assignment. So it's kind of like a Canvas quiz. Let's just start out with the first one, which is the one that I've always used for a while, which is exam quiz. So the first thing you would call, give this a name. And then here it's going to ask you for a template. And all I'm going to do is give it the template that I created, uh, the blank PDF that doesn't have any solutions. So that, that's what I just uploaded. And it gives you the option of who's going to upload it, the student or the instructor. I just like to do it because I could just take all of the exams once I give it to them and then cut off the staples and then feed it into the scanner that we have in the office. And then you can enable anonymous grading or not. Uh, I usually not, don't really do that. And I'll show you why in a second. Go to create assignment. And the first thing that's going to pop up is uh, basically that blank exam. So there's nothing there. And what you're going to have to do is basically move around these regions. So for example, wherever the spot is for their name, you would do that. You would put this little box here. And then for each of the questions, you're going to put a box around the question. And you'll see why we need to do this in a second. So let's say we have question one, we would you know, put a little box around that. You might want to title it, you know, for whatever this kind of question is. And then you can assign points to that question. So you're going to go through and do this for each of the questions that you have here. I'm just going to quickly go through this so that, you know, it roughly matches the, the question. And there's just four questions on this little quiz that I created. And then after this, you would hit save outline. And then as you see on the left-hand side, there's some sequence of steps that you'll follow. So the first one is edit the outline. The second one is you upload the scans that you just made. So this is uh, the scans of the students' uh, exams. So you would do that. It's going to spin its wheels for a few seconds because it'll take... So this is one PDF with all of the student exams. So if you actually see it, what it's going to do is split them up so that they could get assigned to each individual student so that Cam uh, grade scope knows which assignment belongs to what student. So this will take a second. And as you can see, it's split it up into these three different, let's say, students. After that, you would go to manage submissions. And here, if I actually had a real roster, it would try to do its best to actually assign which student it thinks that person is. And usually does a, you know, it gets like 75% of them correct. But if not, you can just see the name there and then you would just type it in. And given that you already have the roster synced up, you would just select the name and then the names will be synced up so that it can assign the grade to the right individual. So here I had those three questions. The first one, I believe, was a multiple choice. So it gives you a two ways of grading the uh, assignments. One is you just grade individually. So you would go through each of the question, the, the solutions. Kind of, It gives you a quick preview at the very top right here where my cursor is. Um, the other method is where it tries to group them together. So if it's like a fill in the blank, it will try to do its best to group those together and actually makes grading really easy. So for example, here I have a multiple choice, so I can just hit this. And if you look through this, let's see, did it actually group them? I guess it didn't really do, well, I had three separate solutions for three separate students and they all didn't um there wasn't going to be an overlap i think and so you could create one group would be none of the above what's selected 
so that there wasn't really any grouping that was created. But if there was multiple students that selected none of the above, they would all get grouped into that group. And so that really would simplify the, the grading. And I guess I can have another group for incorrect or something. So one of them could be the correct solution. Maybe I should uh, rename that. And the other ones would be grouped into everything else. Um, and so now you would grade those essentially groups. So whoever had uh, this one would be right now, what we're doing is that we're looking at a, a specific group of students that, agree, that selected this one. Um, and in this one, this is actually the, so right now on the right hand side, what you're seeing is a rubric. And so this is how you're marking points essentially. So, and it does this by subtracting, this is a negative rubric. So if you were to select this, you can see this student or this group of students would get a zero out of 10 points here. If this answer was correct, they would all get this. So now you assign points for that solution for that group of students. You go to max for this one, just for sake of doing this, we'll say that this is a correct answer, even though technically it's not. But And so all those group of students would get the full 10 points and then you would be done grading. So it kind of smartly would be able to group the students based on their answers if it's multiple choice. So here are the two groups. These are all the students that, you know, answered A essentially, and then the other ones that answered or anything other than the correct answer, which was this one. And they would all get grouped and it would grade them all at once, essentially. I think it might be better if I show you also the free response and how I like to grade these more individually, but you can also try to group them if you want to. This is the method that is most commonly how I grade. And so I'll have a rubric, depending, you know, what they did wrong, you can describe what they did wrong. So maybe um, one of the things they missed is a um, sub, uh, subtraction or something minor. And so maybe I put this question out of one point, but, you know, you can change this amount by whatever amount you want to take away. Maybe they missed, you know, whatever issue that they did wrong that you're subtracting points for, you would write all those issues here. Or something. I'm just making this stuff up and whatever you want to subtract yeah maybe this is a, a larger mistake so maybe you subtract more points for that and so you would look at this you would say okay this person missed this and then you hit the right arrow or you hit next and it takes you to a different student so now you're grading the different student and maybe you say okay this is actually the correct solution so you would say this is correct you would go to a, a different student and you say okay this they missed um, this portion or something like that. And then you would go to the next ungraded and then you're done. Here you see the little bar. It shows you how many um, assignments are left to grade for that specific question. So it's a very natural way to grade um, because you're grading by one question at a time. And then the other thing that it makes it possible is say you're going through and grading and then later on you find out, ah, I think I'm penalizing students too much for this. Um, so, um, you can, you know, look at which students you assign that grade to, um, which in this case is just the student. Um, and then you can just say, ah, let's actually make this this much. So all of the students that I marked for this misprint now would get regraded or, you know, their score would change to reflect that change for everybody. So I'll stop here. Um, cause this is like the bulk of the of what I use Gradescope for. Um, this is how I normally grade. The first one was more of a, I didn't, um, kind of nice, especially if it's a uh, multiple choice that can automatically grade. I think yeah, mostly I graded for exams and yeah. uh, programming yeah. assignments for me. Um, and then during COVID, I was using it for online assignments for quizzes yeah. and stuff. Um, yeah. You can also do bubble sheets, but I've never done that where basically you just give them the exam yeah. and then you print out, it, it gives you a printout so that they can fill in the bubble sheets and they can auto grade that as well. Yeah. Um, yes, sir? Thank you. Uh, Carlos, I have another, I have so another they, question. They because the thing that you showed here, they were written questions, they were word question or equations. If I want to have something visual, is it possible? Uh, can you describe what you mean by that? Visual, for example, a mathematical uh, example, I want to add some figures when they are, or for example, in any classes, thermodynamics, I want to add some graphs. Is it possible or I should create everything myself? Can I bring it to that, to grade school? Well, is this for a quiz, an exam, an assignment? 
Uh, it is for uh, exam. So if, it, if it's an online exam or a paper exam? Uh, online. So if it's an online, yeah, you can insert images. So you just hit insert images and then you upload um, okay. whatever image and then it would show that on the right. Yeah. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, Buff? Yep. So can you show um, some of how you grade, you grade code in? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I think they have an example here. Uh, I've been using it a lot more recently. Uh, so the first thing is that uh, in order to configure the outer grader, um, you're going to need, um, it's like a sample project. Um, and so they give what that sample project looks like. Essentially, it's like a little folder that comes with a bunch of stuff. Um, the main thing that you're going to need to update would be this file here. There's a couple files. And then these tests. And these are basically the things that are going to run the code of the students um, and evaluate whether um, their code is correct or not. Uh, what those test cases le look like. Essentially, it runs their function whatever that function is. And I think they have this for Java and C and some other languages. And then it checks that their function is working correctly or not. Work with you more one-on-one -on -one if you, you want to go through this. Um, because yeah, okay. it took me yeah. a little bit to figure this out myself as well. Yeah, that would be helpful. So do you know if, you know, suppose you have, say, a MATLAB file, right? It's code that you could have MATLAB execute, can you call something like MATLAB or an external, you know? I don't um, know about MATLAB. Uh, interesting thing about this or useful thing is that, uh, so, oh, I guess they do because it's right here is one of the languages it looks like. Um, so it might be just straight out supported already. So you don't have to do that Docker thing. Um, but um, it could generate a report for similarity between programs is very helpful especially when you see things that like this is 100 percent similar and say like, okay <laughs> um and then it gives you the for how many like characters that this match for um so if you see a high number here and a high number here then probably copied <laughs> um one last tidbit in general in all of this is that there is a regrade request and i usually reserve this for if students spot that you know, we marked something incorrect when it should have been marked correct. Um, they have the opportunity to, on their end, for each of the questions that they go to, um, let's say the student went here, they would go to that specific question and then there's a button somewhere where they can request a regrade after they get their grade back and you would see all the regrade requests here. Um, and then you can just review what they wrote. I was like, oh, I think I got this right because I did this, 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 and this. Um, so it could be something that we just missed it. Um, so you would see these here. Um, usually I give a time window. That's another neat thing that Canvas also doesn't have. Not to say I'm a salesman for grade school, but we already have it at school. So it's, it's free.